Okay, I'm going to call the uh, it's September 1st, 2022 meeting of the Roll Commission to order. Is it the roll call? Bill Groves, Commissioner. Michael White House, Commissioner. George Matthew, Commissioner. Public Boys, Commissioner. Very good. We do have a quorum. Um, public communications. Do we have anyone that was in our queue? Or? Uh, we have David McBride. David's here as, as our uh, town council liaison. Glad to talk to him. Or you, David. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Thank you. Great, how's everyone? Sorry, I couldn't make it. Pick up a delivery of children tonight, so I apologize for not being there. But thank you. Okay, first order of business approval of minutes from the meeting of June 2nd, 2022. As you know, we did not meet um, in August, so that was why last minutes. Um, I hope everyone had an opportunity to read through them, and if we have any changes, additions, Please. Motion to approve. Do have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, remaining minutes are approved. Old business. Um, Broughton Business Roundtable. We had a meeting last Thursday. Um, I tried my best to get there. There was just my schedule it wasn't wasn't working for me, but I did get some feedback on it that it was not really attended. Um, we met normally and, and, and Rob, myself, and Paige and, and Lauren sat down. Um, I think we need to just kind of read look, but I still like the idea behind this. Um, and I'll just give you my input is I've noticed that the Cha Raider Mystic Chamber has become backup active. They're out there doing stuff. So I think we should re-engage them um, because I'm not really then that the EDC owns this, I'd like to be a, a partner with it, but I think we can bring some outside sources in to, to try to, to get these to be more of what, what our, our thought behind it was, is to bring people together. Um, I know Borat business um, has not come back up the same way, but um, maybe if we can GBA, GBA, get them re-engaged somehow, maybe that's a good way of them picking up and starting again. Well, so I, I created a Facebook group called Broad Business Association because there is no GBA. Yeah. So, I, I, so I figured we'd take the name and run with it again. That, and as I said, I use it as an interest maybe that we can get the, get it starting. Maybe this mm -hmm. could be a starting point. Um, another uh, idea that, that um, was brought up around the table is maybe have speaker topics just to have someone there to have an actual topic to speak to that, that might induce people to say, hey, that's what they want to hear about. Um, just some ideas that we threw out around the table, but with that, I'll open it up to any other suggestions or any ideas um, about how to kind of get this to what we were looking for originally. Um, yes, yeah, so I said, we created a Facebook group called Broad Business Association. Um, so, unfortunately, my connections and local businesses are not what they were when I was networking more actively locally. Um, but the purpose of the group is that people can be invited there and then promoted from there. Unfortunately, the Broad Community Forum, which is where this kind of thing had been promoted, now basically doesn't allow event promotions. Um, so that's the tool I was expecting to use to promote it, and the post got taken down. Um, so there, there is a, as we've noticed in the past, a limit uh, or a, a lack of ways to communicate with businesses in town. Well, I, I guess I would start with going right to, to Bruce is still is Broad Mystic, right? Who's 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 slack, who's slack right? Mm -hmm. it, it is to reach out and just throw the idea out because, as I said, I, I would much prefer to see this as a partnership anyway. And all the more partners we have involved with it, I think the better. Um, you know, we, I have town staff that that is always there and doing it. And they're all sitting there by themselves. What's the purpose of it? Yeah. And uh, I still like the concept, but I think some of it we have to change to the the messaging marketing approach of what we're trying to do. Um, you have a location for your meetings. We had we had a location first, and then that became a, a topic of, of contention, which actually worked out pretty well. Then we did switch it. We don't plan on having it to be the same place, so we're open to have it at, at more of a, a rotating basis to make it conducive to other people. Right. You know, for, for the rest of the year, we're going to be at five right? Yeah, until yeah. through October, okay. and then November and December, um, there's holiday conflicts. So we're going to be, we're going to be where? Commons, the Commons, the Commons, the Cure Commons, next to the Cure Commons. Okay. Um, we used to, um, a while ago, I remember, go with business, business, 
meet the business owner, maybe he would be there, they make the presentation of their business. Um, and we just rotate and, and do that. That was kind of nice. Um, and I don't know if that's something we need to do. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's where we want to take this and want to create. Yeah. And it was, it was great. I mean, you could be visit the different businesses as commissioners. I think it's really helpful and helps us spread the word more about you know, what's going on in the community. So I really like that. It's so and these weren't just for new businesses, that they were just for any no, business that wanted to. No, because the campus one uh, over at Pfizer's is the campus business Kate, Kate Bradford, I think she was retiring. So we went there from going there and she, she it was great. Yeah. Well, well and, and that, was, that was one of the cool things about the GBA was they met all over, like they had one meeting at DB, they had one meeting at Carter Hall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, they, so as a, at the time I was new to town, yeah. um, it was a way to like get to meet a whole bunch of different business owners in different places. So that would definitely be the direction to take it. Especially newer businesses, because I think it shows the interest we have as a commission and to, to support the businesses that are, you know, yeah. on the rise. Which actually, even if we did that, even if it was just a couple of town staff, a couple of commissioners and one or two people, plus the people with the host, then at least they'd feel Represent. Yeah, yeah. They, they feel included. So that, that's definitely something to prefer. But. I was just going to say there were a number of locations that worked well. I'm thinking of uh, maybe Federal. We had one. Mm -hmm. uh, Cardinal Honda was a really yeah. successful yeah. one. So we have done those in the past. Yeah. So. Brussels Ribs, but I don't know what's called now. I forget what it was at the time we went there. We had a meeting with the It's usually the time. I forget what it's called now. Pocket something, tech pockets, tech pockets. But before that, whatever it was, I remember they were new and it was really Yeah, they had the lava slice machine of a third in my life. That's funny. Anyway. So, so on the basis of that, so, so I think we're still all in favor of, of pursuing this, but I think what we're, we were kind of brainstorming is to just kind of look outside of what we were, we were doing to begin with, as opposed to just if we have the meeting, they will come. So that's part of the reason why people would come is you're 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 focusing on a single business to go in and doing and if it's just town and, and members of us going in, it's still it's still outreach from that standpoint. I, I think GBA needs to somehow get up and running again and, and uh, you know that that's not really for us to, to to do, but we can support it. And maybe it's something along the lines of the business owners could <clears throat> put the word out that it needs a commission, it's not that me, but I mean, it gives an opportunity to meet some of them. Right, and they don't have, they don't seem to have that that centralized. So, so the, the the Mystic Chamber can send out Bruce can send out something that hey, they if they would like to do something. Does anyone want to volunteer to, to host this? And they might have said, yeah, we'll we'll host it. Um, you know, the, the the place they bought the old toy store. You know, they use that as one of their right. Well, so I'm just saying that there are things that are going on, and, and I really would like to get stuff more down Central Broughton. But and you know. has Mr. Chamber actually done something in Broughton recently? Nothing in Broughton that I know of. I think they just really have gotten at least themselves back together again. Right, it's recent. Yeah, it's it's within the last six months that they they've started to yeah, reorganize, and, and and Bruce is the one that spearheaded it. And, and I don't know that's oh, no, that's right. I was just going to mention, although maybe they haven't done events, probably the most significant thing that the Mystic Chamber's done over the past year or so was they relocated their offices to pretty close to the bridge. It's right next and, to the uh, grassy lawn. Yes, yeah. and the goal was so they could better serve <clears throat> downtown Mystic, particularly right. the Broughton side. Yeah. So that was a strategic move, but they don't do anything really outside. No, I, but I applaud what they're doing, is they're doing something. And maybe we start with that and maybe Groton GBA will say, maybe we should start doing something again also, because that's the sense I get from meeting with businesses. There's really no, there's no person to reach out to saying, hey, I'm trying to organize something where we can say, hey, we're here to support that effort. Okay. And they are doing the, the uh, brew run, in the city brew run. Uh, right. Okay. We get so yeah, there is. Yeah, there the is. banners are nice. I always like to see the yeah. banners to kind of, you know, bring the things that people have mentioned. Um, so no, I yeah. think it's great. Yeah, and, and yeah, 
think about it because yeah, remember this started as being something completely different from the GBA meetings, and then the failure mode of that was like, let's just do the thing that used to work. So we only actually run the GBA, the GBA type meetings twice. Um, but and I think not having a host partner means that we also lose promotional partner. So if we're partnering with Cardinal Honda or whoever, they're going to tell their uh, they're at least going to bring their team. They're going to tell their their audience, their customers, that there's something going on. They're going to tell them they know. So um, yeah, I think we reach out to businesses and have them because also then the host business is the host, so they're the ones who provide the, the copy of the donut. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to. Yeah. Um, so just, do you have um, like guest speakers come? I didn't want to get to one because I had a chance, but. Um, I, I heard of some of these kinds of events that have been successful, and they would bring in like an accountant to talk about you know tax changes, just a 15 minute talk, nothing extravagant, or you know a social media person to talk about social media or something like that, something to help draw. That that's what we we discussed what we do because we had done that with our forums like to have someone come in whether we're a sector or um, the, the 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 when they were dealing with the supply chain issues and like bring in people from the industry to talk and it did draw people. Um, this was started with more of a networking, bring your problems to us. And I think we need to focus more to maybe what has induced people to come. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so. well it, it's, it's a totally different event. Um, there's, there's a lineage from it, but I think we need to cut off the round table. Didn't work. And now bring back, the, the GBA type meetings, because those those speakers were people, local people with updates. Because um, that information, social media stuff, accounting stuff, you can get that in 4,000 places on the internet. Um, I mean, I, I, I could literally run 168 hour continuous summit with that information nonstop day and night for a week, and it wouldn't be that hard for you to put together. Uh, so it's, but, it, the night. But, yeah. but for updates of what's going on in town, that's a really hard plot. You know, the things that, yeah. the, the updates you have, the updates Paige has, the updates uh, John Burr has, the updates, the, like, what's going on? Because we, a lot of things are not being effectively covered by, you know, we basically have one media outlet and it's over overtaxed. They do their best, but they can't cover everything going on in every meeting and everywhere. So having a place where oh, we're going to have the head of plenty and develop, we're going to have a representative from the base, we're going to have, and each each month have someone in there who's giving the update from you know, rock utilities from right some of that they, they, they being hosted by the business this is talking to us about their business yep. and then we talk a little bit about how we support the business and what's going on yeah you know, but you know and then some of like like you know the dollars come back like, yeah. i suspect 99.8 of the town is like well 94 percent like not as move but the ones who know it move don't know what's coming back exactly you know? and i love it we used to actually have a, a board for the GBA, and we <coughs> met once a month to plan the following month. Mm -hmm. We'd have something for the for that month, and then we get together and plan what we were going to do with the next month, what the location was going to be. Um, we were very fortunate that the head of uh, Broad Utilities was very active with us. We could certainly try to get that again. Uh, the mayor and the town plan, uh, town plan. Well, he used to come quite often too. Um, John Burke's position in in Brighton, and the mayor and the city used to come very regularly to the meetings, and they would just give a short synopsis on something they were working on or something they knew was different, changing, and then we would have a speaker if we, you know, especially if it was a new business. We'd have, we would highlight the new business. Like we could be doing that for the, the New York deli or the bar that's going to be opening up. Or uh, we could bring the guy from the one that's been so successful in Papuanic Bridge. Why? Yeah. But you have to have the two meetings in order to make the one that right. you really want to have to work for. So, so from your who would I reach out to from the business community to say, hey, would you be interested in it? Because you know, at least from where, so a point of contact to say, hey, this is what we're looking at. I don't think they're not it. Um, like the businesses you just mentioned, I know the owners. I can simply reach out to them and say, you want to host an event, 
we're gonna bring a bunch, we're gonna, you know, invite people from the town. I think it's a start. Come, yeah. Well, and then reach out to those leaders and say, we're having an event, you should be there. Like, like, like the first one. I'm yeah. sure that uh, Kim would be the first one that Todd would talk. Okay. And yeah. most people were very willing to do it. Sometimes it was a little place, sometimes it was a big place. But we always managed to get George there. <laughs> and he would tell us what he was up to, and everybody would say, Oh, don't believe it. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Al Bronte was the he was in charge of the artistic film. Yeah, Al was great. And Al was kind of wonderful. I don't worry about it. I do. I see him with the Marine all the time. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to yeah. relax this. Yeah. But we had uh, we had a real mixture of business owners and politicians, and it was a nice mix. And then we would, like I said, we would go to different places. But we needed a little boost. We would try to make sure that that's where we were going to have the issues. So, I mean, I think that what we could do is if we got a small group to start that would work on putting together for the following one, the location and what you wanted to have at your meeting. And then you would do the same thing. You know, it just you know, it right. went and that's along. A pilot it, meeting. Correct. And so so, so is, is Cardinal a good place to start? Yeah. I like that. Idea. Could you reach out to yeah. Cardinal? Yeah. She, what, does, she does a great job. From a speaker standpoint, maybe we have someone from the town that's begun off. You know, it's just because it's a topic that maybe there's there's not a lot of information out there, but you know, we can have someone in there just to, to kind of go over the parameters and, and to get it out. Um, just as a, I'm just throwing that as an idea, also. Uh, one idea to start it and, and uh, see yeah, how it goes. Everybody always thought that we page we come and give us kind of an update. And that gave them all stuff to feed them. Good delivery. Well, as I said, we get our, our package every month that I go through and stuff like that. You've got a lot to, there's a lot to go over there before. Well, it's been a drive across the country. Well, it should be. That's what he lives. I know, exactly. That's like, it would be us. Well, and, and also, so, so we have two events already planned. Well, days are planned out next four months because we're not going to do anything for the holiday season. And then January is when we go to Cardinal or whatever, um, which means that for the two events we currently have scheduled, as we reach out to these business owners to invite them to host, we can also invite them to attend the ones that are already planned. Sure. Um, and and yeah, whatever we can keep it simple as we're going to have representatives of the economic development mission share or for the economic development staff sharing updates on what's going on in town. I am not adverse though for October because the, the best way is is if it's going through the motions in September and October because they're just scheduled, doesn't necessarily good use of time. If we can get something for October. Re, re change venue, rescheduled, same idea, and just yeah, and, okay. And so I wouldn't say let's stick to these two. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so to the same date, same date, just and, we'll we'll just, and we'll we'll now, yeah. so. And yeah. you missed the holiday. I know that occasionally we had a social with with the commission commissioners, and that's kind of nice. We did it during the lunch. We had lunch. Lunch. It's it's nice to do a social. No is that okay? Do you have, is there anything planned for the next couple of months for all the, for all the meetings? I'm sorry, planned in what way? Well, you, you still have a meeting coming up, don't you? For a morning meeting? Uh, yeah, so September and October are planned for <laughs> We can use the October date, though, for our first, you know, like a carnival is what my point is. So we already have dates that are planned, just change the venue. Why, why, if no one's attending in September, why do we get in October? Just because we have a schedule. I think that's just a waste of time. Well, sometimes you have to build from one, two, three, or four. Yeah. Well, summer's never a good time on the, I'm well, accusing of that. So that's why I'll give September. You know, I, I think some of these places might have, a, you know, a time that they'd like to do it. Like Cardinal usually does it around the holiday. Okay. Well, um, well I'll let them dictate it. So what I'm suggesting is you got the you got a few places you got the New York deli mm -hmm. and uh, you have cobbles and you have that little coffee shop which I'm sure would be happy to do one for us. Are they still it's social? Is that the New York yeah. place over at a social next to H&R Block? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, social is a good place. All right, Michael, you got your working order. 
let's get get some venues set up and see if we can do that. And as I said, hopefully it's an impetus to the GBA maybe be generating some interest in other groups themselves. Um, yeah, if, to put together the events itself is if there's a if we're focused on building this type of event isn't that arduous to do with those people showing up, then you've got people you can then coalesce them into your team. Well, for that point. What I think you need to do is whoever could create it, you need to send an email to everybody here that can be followed. So all they gotta do is hit follow it, put all their lists in and let it go and ask those people to follow it. And that way you're gonna get the best coverage. Well, we and we got the explore page. I mean we we do have a better, we are better situated from that standpoint, but I, I think it's a great idea. So I'm hopeful if we put together what's been missing is the planning ahead of the meeting. So we can't just assume it automatically. It's something that great. We need, whoever's gonna be involved, we need to have a meeting outside of this meeting and before the next one to say what, what's gonna happen. Right. That, that, that's what we're missing. I so agree yeah, completely. Yeah, but going back to the root of the whole TV thing, you and I remember. Uh, why not have the next the one following hosted in the district chamber site? I've not been to the site. I don't know how big they are and what's not. And that includes all the businesses in Mystic. I'm sorry, George, I can't hear you. What about the Mystic Chamber hosting the next TV or TV? Round you mean in the office? No, 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 no. In the office space? Within the office so that they could give us. Is it? I have not been to the building. I don't think no. they have the no. no. space for that. Oh, yeah. 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 Some other, yeah. other venues, but I don't want to say so that. They have, they, they've got the reference. They have, they have a lot of resources. That just for cheap. Cheap. I think we need to stay separate until we get a little strength. Yeah, I, I, I That's kind it. of concur with that. I, I'm just trying to take the. How Jeep, how Mystic did it and regenerated themselves to purpose is to do the same thing on this side and uh, and then maybe bring them together in, in such a bridge. We have a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a bridge. <laughs> and then we can it with the rules to give us planning is the key. The ideas though were good, and that's why I wanted to, to, to kind of bring it around here. So let's reach out. For one, to see if that's something hard to like to do, timing and such, when we have the plan in place, then we'll move yeah. forward with. Well, and the thing that makes makes sense it's easier is not to plan a month in advance, but to have a twelve meetings. So when you talk to someone, they're like, "Oh, I'd rather do May." You don't have to go back to them in April. You say, "Yep, May's yours. You got it." Got so by the time you get to March, you're here. Once you get a template, then yeah, we don't have that. Yet. But, at, but yeah. let's start with the thing because I think it will move it hopefully in the right direction. Yeah, no, this, this will be once now that I'm focused on it. Because before I was I was running it as the round table, which was a totally different marketing model. We can't be afraid of trying things. Yeah. But we also have to be aware that when they don't seem to be working, that we can also change what we're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Pivoting over to the huh? Jack <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, did right. the black belt <laughs> training. Uh, okay, next up on it, um, the vacant property referral. This is something that um, was referred over to a town councilor. Rachel asked us to uh, give us our input and such. And, and really, um, I've done some research. Um, Robert has taken over as the gather of this information at the round table. I don't know if anyone else has spoken to businesses. I, I've actually came across several of them um, since our last meeting um, when this came up. Um, but I'm gonna leave it there, Rob, if you have anything to share with the group I, at this point, or? I don't really have anything, unfortunately, to update at this time about that. I think that August was a, a bit of a difficult month to kind of get any sure. attention related to getting facts on that. So I'll get back to collecting the information. I, I think it was something an informal request from from Rachel, so that, that's why I, I embraced it. I, I uh, the feedback I gave to Robert, and I just happened to have a couple businesses in, in general, um, and these weren't per se the empty businesses and say part of the larger 
you know, office, you know, the, where the old Benny's was on is more like the standalones. Um, and a lot of what they run into is the developers or prospective buyers of them doesn't see any value in the buildings. They see value in the land um, because the cost of bringing them up to code, um, updating them for, for wiring and such like that, it's, just, it, it's not cost effective for them. So they value the property, but the owners of the buildings and, and such value the, the building. And that's why the negotiations usually haven't gone very far. Um, one in general is the old pet grooming place. And uh, he came in and this is what he looked to do. And, and obviously we went to a standstill, but I brought those things up and uh, the owner wasn't budging. If they just, and, and as far as I'm concerned, that whole plaza could be torn down. So, you know, it was there when I was a little boy and it was old men. Um, <laughs> So those are some of the things that you face. Um, the, the idea of taxing or, or, or charging someone for not doing it, it's more where I see our places maybe to go in and, and get, put true values in it and help out from that standpoint. Maybe there's something that we can do as an EDC to help some of these deals um, from a different perspective because you know, there's things that we've already done you know, with Rogers development, you know, the sewer connection, or you know, what what is it that that maybe we can to help these processes? But um, so, the, so the, the owners are thinking that the structures still have economic value, correct? And the buyers, the just, buyers see the the land, yeah. and that's all they're interested in. And, and you're usually looking at a difference of, of several hundred thousand dollars. Um, there is no intrinsic value to a developer whatsoever. And, and, and there's plenty of other places they can go. Uh, so, so that that's well, I think that, that is the idea of the the vacancy fee or whatever you want to call it, is that it changes the calculus for the owner who says, Oh, if I just hold on as long as someone's gonna see the value, and then ching, 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 the holding cost goes up, and like, yeah. And and whether or not that for whatever reason they decide to give up on it, it's like, ah, I'm done with this, I'm just gonna sell it. Which serves our purposes, or huh? My math now shows it does not make sense to hold on to this land for that long. I would, I would just say it would have to be a pretty significant fine thing to, to make that occur. Um, what the, the key for me, and I look at everything from an economic <laughs> business side of it, is is the property value has to go up in value for the seller to now say okay, because they don't really see it, and uh, that's where you drive in more people moving into town. More consumers, more now the value to that developer, that property value goes up in price. So um, that's really where the, where you'll see more paying taxes, then, which is somewhat of a penalty if you're not bringing in revenue. Yeah. What's the um, next to Chelsea? This is my question. Just so curious. They own that property and they could build. Yeah, they bought property. that from. They bought that and they're expanding the bank. Was it? I don't know. Used to be the pizza house. The, the, the building they yep, out. Yep. And so they're expanding the, the their, their They're redoing bank. the whole thing. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. Thank you. I just can't figure out what they're doing in the back park. Well, they're just brushing rocks back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's just shaking. Funny. Yeah, I just, I was just like, <laughs> every morning, I'm like, oh, man, they're just, and they still have a movement in it. Yeah, but they're just basically bringing their building up to a $10 million project. Yeah, it's big. Bill, David raises his hand. Uh, oh, David, go ahead. I, I thank you. I, I can't speak for Rachel, but I think what you may have uh, was looking for you to do is to review the policy that's in the package because uh, the the council put forth well before my time a, a plan to to develop a town-owned property reevaluation process. And three councilors have been involved for the past, I don't know, three months or so developing that and making refinements to it. And one of the refinements we've made is to make sure the EDC, as well as the Planning and Zoning Commission, are involved in the process earlier. And what, what is in your package is what Rachel provided to you to help to, uh, to I think, have a review to give comments on. Uh, we had the, the package that's in your current, we had a, a meeting last night um, as well, and we made additional comments on this document. So it's not the latest document, but tomorrow uh, we'll be putting out a, a notice for an agenda meeting for next Wednesday, the 7th, in which we're requesting. Uh, EDC, as well as the planning and zoning and anyone else in the, in the public uh, to comment on this document to give us feedback on any changes 
that that anyone sees fit. So I think that's what she was referring to to get you involved. So the document that comes out tomorrow, uh, if you can take a look at it, but we are looking to get your input on, you know, whatever whatever changes you think should be made on this document. So I just wanted to give a little bit more clarity okay. on that. Thank you. I was a little confused. Are you talking about the reuse evaluation process? Or are you talking about the vacant property um, that was referred to us last June? I'm, I'm referring to the policy, the, the policy and procedure that's in the package. Yeah, okay, we're not, yeah, this was a little bit different. Rachel referred this over about possible uh, collecting fees from properties that are not being utilized. Okay, I misunderstood, I didn't see that in the package. That's okay, fine. thank you, disregard this. Sorry. sorry for the confusion. Nope. Thank you, David, yes, I just wanted to add, uh, was it last month, I think, um, uh, Councilperson Franco was here, and, and what she did want it addressed, but she also, was open to new ideas. Sure. And she said, okay, if you could make a comment on my proposal, but if you have a different idea, we talked about incentives, right? Maybe she said, if you, if you have a different way to maybe come at this, or deal you. with these vacant properties, she wanted to hear from the EDC as well. That is why I referred that over. That, that's why I brought this up is what these are the specifics that I got um, from, from some of the business transactions for Robert to be able to collect in any of that type of stuff. And there might be alternatives to say, okay, we understand where you're coming from with fees, but maybe there's a different approach to this and, and more like more of the carrot side of getting these properties. You know, the, the sellers being a little bit more, you know, amenable about what the value is actually worth and such. So because the other side too are seeing some properties that have gotten torn down because of the owners. Cost is too high. Uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, insurance building here where I live that was torn down. The old Edna building, little town, Salt Spring building got torn down. So that's the other thing is the uh, well, the Pfizer building, it just was three million dollars a year in tax. It's cheaper, it's cheaper but yeah, yeah. So you got to watch that too. That's yeah, you do watch that. Yeah. And, and I'm looking from the standpoint of interested buyers. And that was one of the things that, that Councilwoman Rachel brought up is people have been interested buyers, but people haven't sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you have an interested buyer, but they're often pricing because you know I'm pricing the land, you're pricing the land to build it. Maybe that's where EDC can, can be yeah. a positive. Um, and I don't know how, but, yeah. but I'd rather look at it. From <laughs> and the other example would be a movie theater. I mean, nobody knows, I don't know what's going on. I mean, is there any? Do you ever hear any rumblings? I don't think it's something you do here for part of your property. Well, that's owned by that whole complex. I remember yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. the old bank building. You know, that there's that's been a, a tough nut to crack for years, years. And it's and it's more family squabbling unless that's changed. It's family squabbling, it has nothing to do with economics. What's the name of the problem? Uh, Not that. The they are attorneys, but they're sure. down. Yeah, they're down in uh, the Fairfield County area, right? Yeah. I mean, it got so bad with the bank is we had to for our lease payments, they had to go to receivership. They they couldn't even decide on how the lease payments were supposed to be handled. So uh, it, it's a really a nasty, um, and a lot of prospective buyers have come through and spent a good amount of money doing due diligence on the property, and then they got crickets from. We couldn't. We wanted to build our bank on the other end of the parking lot, and they did not even respond to our proposal. They were open to uh, potentially doing multifamily in that back corner, mm -hmm. and they said, "Do you talk with any developers who are interested?" I said, "Yeah, we have a bunch," and uh, I provided them a listing. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, they can make a connection. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the <laughs> like, you get crickets at that point. You're just like, "Okay, where are we with yeah. this?" And, and they can't. I think we're to keep reapproaching. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're right. That that is is a key area that could be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So for yeah. next meeting, should I reach out to everybody and try to uh, coalesce some options and present them for us discussing yeah. next time? I would do that, and I would also um, maybe jot something out to uh, Rachel and just say, you know, this is some of the feedback we've got preliminary, you know, that there might be some other options. Can you go through the farm? Is that the, the 
Yes, Lauren's the best facilitator. Are they asked a good course of action? Okay. Uh, we have no business on the agenda, but next up is on my report, and that's basically what David was touching upon. Um, <coughs> received your request. Um, I guess it was from the town council or was it through uh, town manager? It, it came from the town manager, but I believe uh, Councilman McBride had made the request okay. for representatives from both the Planning and Zoning Commission and EDC to review and participate at the meeting on the 7th. Is it, is it, so that's why I, so this came about at, um, he just sent an email out to myself um, and to Robert, we had our meeting. I hadn't seen the document at that point. So uh, we got a town manager said that we could put it into the package just so if someone, ha we have something to look at. Um, I did read through it. Um, the first page of it is what the current policy procedure, um, George. Copy for I can print another one. I've read it already. Well, in a nutshell, because there's not much we can we can no, that's fine. Um, so what you have at the front page is what the current policy is. Um, and Susan, George, and myself, having been on a little longer, that's what we had worked under um for some previous um town properties that that we worked with. Um and and the proposal was the second part is is redrafting um, this, and, and that's where I guess David is, is pivoting up for the town council, um, and they want the EDC input on on do these changes make sense and, and maybe redrafting how it is. So because we're lean and he happened to be at the meeting, <laughs> Robert got appointed to be our liaison also for that. So David uh, Robert Boris will be our representative and will report back to us. Um, and that's really all I have at this point is is it's in that that stage and and uh, we'll, we'll we'll go to the first meeting and then report back next meeting where we are and um we can go from there and, and see what our input is on. So Robert's busy. Yeah, other things. Yeah, you know what? That's what happens. Either you don't show up at the meeting, you get appointed, or you're at the meeting, and you say, "Wow, that's a good idea," and then you get appointed. So it's just you learn, and I learned to delegate. So so that's all I had for you. Do you have any? Questions for me, I'd be happy, but there's not much I have other than that. So, okay, with that, I'm going to go over to the meat of our meeting, which is uh, the staff reports. Okay. Where am I here? COVID. Okay. Uh, so, you all have a copy of the report. As was mentioned, ARC is a big deal for us. Um, we're spending a lot of time on that. Um, in short, we have over 70 projects at this point, but let me be more clear. We have 53 of those are new projects because uh, during the budget process, the council had actually allocated some funding to some of the new projects. So those were internal municipal uh, <coughs> projects. So, but all in, all in total, we have over 70 projects about $8.6 million. Um, and we are working through the Long-Term Recovery Committee. That's a committee that's appointed by the town manager. We will meet the end of September. I think it's September 28th, I believe. And summary sheets of these projects have just been sent out. They were sent out today to, uh, to the committee with evaluation sheets in trying to Kind of distill down the projects because we have more requests than we have fun. That's fairly common. So that's where we're at in a, a diverse, diverse requests for funding. They're all over the place. Small projects, large projects, municipal, nonprofit, private sector, um, all over the place. So we are trying to get the best bang for the buck and make wise investments in Groton as we come out of this pandemic, that's what it's about. Um, <clears throat> Lauren and Sam attended the National Night Out August 2nd at Quantic Plains. The main goal was to continue promoting uh, Greater Groton, which I really think has got a lot of traction. Over the past few months, we continue to use that, and I think it's been uh, a great success. 
um, Community Challenge Grant. <clears throat> We're focused on our downtown and also Quantic. We continue to build partners and we uh, we did present that to the cow on august 23rd general support i think the comment was well, we should be adding more information which is understandable but this is an evolving bohemoth that's the best way to describe it we're probably going to ask for something over five million could be closer to 10 million and those who end up in the final application are the projects that <coughs> um, are closer to shop already who actually have some funding and ability to implement. So we have a number that we're including, uh, Rogers Development Company, um, The Barn, public projects we're doing, and we're also, um, just today, we met with the Brock Housing Authority to expand on a project they desire at Vassar Park. So very much in flux, but we're talking about millions. So we're trying to package this together and get it in by October 7th to the state. Um, Groton Business Roundtable, we already kind of covered that. And next one, uh, Claude Chester. There was a significant public outreach effort on Claude Chester that took place, and uh, we just did the final review on all the tallies of, of, of the input from the meeting and also the greater Groton information that was provided. Um, that will be going to the council shortly, asking for direction on the next steps. Uh, it appears that the public wants the building removed and for the most part wants that site converted into athletic fields and possibly a pool. That, that's the general consensus. Whether or not it will be paid for it, budgeted, that's a different question. But um, that's where we're at at this point in time. How long is the cost of the pool? It seems that it would be going down the age or not? Um, yeah. It's certainly old, but a lot of buildings get repurposed. Yes. Yeah. Um, another program is somewhat of a cousin to the Community Challenge Grant is the Community Investment Fund. It's a huge pot of money at the state level. We're also gearing up to go after that as well. We're reaching out to the city. Uh, we have a number of projects that we're looking at that we could do in Broughton proper, but the number one project for us actually is Main Street. We would love to partner with the city and go after multiple millions. Um, the town of Broughton is an eligible municipality. Um, I believe there are only about 60 uh, communities that have identi been identified in the state municipalities and the town of Broughton is political subdivisions are not. Um, so we would like to partner with the city and hopefully do something on things. Um, moving into public properties, most of these there haven't been that much uh, progress through August. However, uh, AR buildings, AR builders with Gold Star, they did submit their plans, which will be before the Planning and Zoning Commission this fall. I don't know exactly which month, but um, we're looking at over 300 apartments on that site. Which site was that? I'm sorry. That's the, um, the Gold Star Highway Broughton property Broughton. that used to be next to Chicago Plumbing. So you basically have the two town-owned parcels and then the two private parcels that will be aggregated into one development. Did they come in and do a presentation for the council? They did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. But did they go in before planning and zoning? Oh. So they get the actual award, uh, the actual um, zoning approval. Also, Colonel Ledyard School, um, Bell site, uh, he's pretty close to submitting his plans. He's looking at about 65 residential units. It's a two phase development. First phase, they keep the building. He's looking to add a second story with a peaked roof. Second phase in the future would be new buildings to the rear um, on the vacant land. Um, last point, uh, we're pretty much holding steady on the unemployment data notice though that the state has uh, gone up slightly but Groton's been fairly consistent thank you James what for the Sealy school what's the uh, zoning appeal on that <laughs> is it a butter that um I don't know the exact details but there's an allegation that he is impacted by the development he would like some changes 
uh, has the project abuts him and is, is making the case on that front. Usually these things kind of get worked out as they move through the process, but it hasn't been worked out yet. Well, it sounds like we have the ceiling. Well, I just was wondering because I know it's been on there for a long time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any questions for Paige? Any um any any programs being worked on where some of the town property wouldn't be sold but would be owned by the town and then um, look for developers to build houses of a certain size without owning the land in order to keep the costs of the house down? We haven't done anything specifically on that front. I think, I don't want to speak for uh, Councilman McBride, but I think the process that they're trying to work through now in, in terms of determining how they handle the town properties would look at certain criteria like what do we want to use it for do we want to use it for open space okay there's no need for a developer do we want to keep the property and do it for a public private partnership maybe that's something like what you talked about or do we want to sell it outright and using a realtor or go through an rfp process i think that is what they're starting to talk about now where an innovative program like that might help. A little related, I think. I know Broughton Housing Authority is starting to really step up their game. Yeah, but that's that's <coughs> age restricted. I'm talking about something that young families I see. could be in. I, I think we're I think the they, town's pretty good with their age restricted housing. I know it's on the policy of this, but you know, we need something that's for young couples or empty nesters, but it's got to be affordable. And the only way you could make it affordable is if there wasn't land costs. It didn't rate high with Claude Chester. People really are focused on recreation and open space, but I will say that housing was an item that was brought up. And some people said, you know, this might be a great site for housing. It, it didn't get the votes. But that, something like that, where the town retains ownership, right. would certainly buy down the costs of a project. That that is feasible, but we we don't have a specific program or project. Right now. Yeah, there are places that have done it. Now it's quite a while since uh, Fisher's Island did it, but they might have some information that would be helpful. To show how they did the process, because uh, the, the firemen and so forth thought this is, couldn't afford to live on the island, so they bought property and they still own it. And they had a uh, contract to build houses that were affordable. Yeah, and uh, they still are. I'm familiar with some programs in Rhode Island uh -huh. where they call them co-op programs, but a nonprofit or the town owns. The Mm -hmm. And then the residents, um, they own they own the property. It's almost basically a long term lease type agreement of the land, but then they have an equity stake in the structure itself. Right. I think it's something that really really has to be looked at. You know, it's it's just amazing that there's so little for anybody to look at. Or something. So, which part of the government? I'm sorry. Which part of the uh, town? The whole town. The town council. The whole town. town manager's office. The only place that there's a little bit of affordable. affordable no, I mean, to, to evaluate that suggestion. Mm -hmm. He's asking who should be responsible for taking a look into what you're describing. Who would who, be who in the town level? Which department of the town or elected official? Because it's a good idea. Who could trip to uh, who built the houses for the housing? Well, they would put in proposals just like it, so, so it, a developer, you propose with a developer coming in, no land included. Yeah. So okay. that's you know the one of the biggest costs to a builder is the land. Can be, yeah. That they don't have that cost, they can build the house and still have a profit for themselves. Sure. But now you've got a house that instead of 
three hundred thousand. It's two hundred thousand. Oh, I understand the problem, and that, that's right. So does the builder then turn around and sell it? To, so they're building spec houses for for prospective buyers. The buyers are coming in buying property, house only, no property. They have long term lease on. Like a condo. It sounds like yeah. it would be helpful to yeah. the rights. Yeah. 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 We should discuss that. So I, 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 that's how we should come out. I don't, I don't really know who we're going to go to first. I would think, <clears throat> I'd have to think about that. But this might be something that the, the committee should be, since they're looking at the town on property. It's I, a great think, idea. I think yeah. that, um, oh, what was his name? We were talking about him earlier. He's on the uh, um, Housing Authority, right? Oh, Bob uh, Frank. Frank. Yeah, he he has spoken to them about it just briefly. I think I, at one of the meetings he called in, but and I I just couldn't agree with him more. I mean I I know what you know, and it's more expensive to rent than it is to buy if there's no product for people to buy. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the big crunch. Yeah, you know they're paying twenty two to twenty eight hundred for a house. They can have own the house and pay two thousand, but there's nothing left now. You know, nobody's building. Well, yeah. then I would also assume since they don't own the land, they're not paying the property tax except for for the house itself. It would be lower tax costs on top of it, which right. is a big chunk of of your mortgage payments is people that ask for their their taxes and such. So <laughs> it, it is. It sounds like a great idea, and as I said, I think Rock is right. That's something that maybe the this new you know, committee should ring drive down here you know, with the yep. housing and sound that that was a hot project right and look at it today it's still affordable you know and most of the people down there take very good care of their homes right the nice community where is that um yeah. ring that ring drive when you, you get out of the foot of the hill when you're going from here and you're going downtown okay. down the hill okay okay Across from LRT Grasso. Okay, I can go in there. Okay. That, we need something like that. That's yeah. What yeah, I've I've heard that we have three bedroom apartments going for five thousand dollars in town. It's just it's heartbreaking when somebody yeah. calls you. Like how long? We need supply. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I mean that we've been saying that the whole time. It, and that's one part of it. That's one piece of it. We need supply for the people that actually can spend. Five thousand dollars. We don't have any supply. And no. uh, yeah, uh, would, would the same concept work with multifamily like apartment buildings like that on town land operated by a contractor to change? Authority, I suppose. Yeah. Well, or or, or even a private developer, but without the land involved, that would change the math. The well, it's not that complicated of a model. Actually, the Navy housing it out the baby. That's mm -hmm. the model. So the federal yeah. government leases that land or private right. uh, entity. It's right. it's the same model. Mm -hmm. What is the town's uh, affordable housing percentage? Depends on how you want to define affordable housing. So well, you, you include everything is about twenty three percent. Also, you leave up, but that includes Navy housing. You strip out Navy housing, we're down more like fourteen. You still have but, but also, if we did that, we give the town more control over the development, which I, I think could address some of the issues that some of the developers have had and want to do whatever they want to do. The, some locals haven't liked. So the town's actually involved in it. Well, We've been involved in anyway, it today because we don't sell it until it gets to a certain point. Well, yeah, but, but, it, but as opposed to the well, the developers are going to do what they want, it's our land. We're going to find an arrangement where you can make some money. We can get affordable housing. Everyone's happy. Yeah, quality affordable housing. You know, you could have certain regulations, and yeah. if they don't take care of it, they have to sell it. You know, there's things you can put in there to protect you know, people that are there and, and the town. <clears throat> but it's just, idea. you know, you, you just gotta you gotta find something to stop the process. Well, well, and I think some of the the concern with some of the developments has been has been the um, 
the, you know, we can't find out what's in it until we pass it in the mentality. I remember when I was on the RTM and I don't remember which development was, but they came, they came through and they're like, yeah, so we're going to do, you know, something. It'll be kind of like this, but it might change. I don't know. And I said, so we're going to get to vote on it again when it firms up. Like, no, you're going to vote on it now. I'm like, so you're not going to give us to tell us what it is. And this is our final time to vote on it. And off we go. Well, um, I'm going to end up because that, that's going back to the Michigan Mr. Education, which is a completely different model. Yeah. But and that had to do with state, town, and they wanted some concession like that. And the, but, but if the town owns land, then the town, you know, the town is always going to be at the table. There's no yeah. like sign off and off it goes. Yeah. Oh, it turns out good. And you've got to hope that the developers can sit there and you know, be willing to play that game because most of them don't have patience and tolerance of it. And that's, that's what I see with developers. They're just as easy. And I'll give point in case the data center, whether you're for it or against it, Went through all that stuff with the data center. No, not doing it. Guess where it is? Basra. We'll do it here. Fine. There. Now they're collecting the money. So it's yeah. how you come at it. it, it well, someone's going to do it. And the developer's going to go to where they can get their, their project done. At least, at least has one. Right. And yeah. And there's a, there's, and there's a monetary advantage to the towns that see it that way. And whatever. So not going down that path. Um, ladies, on reports. Anything else to report from our team? No, not really. It's kind of quiet. Thank you for your input, though, on the on the morning. Stephen, great, thank you. Uh, we attended the uh, I didn't, but some leaders in the base attended the, the QLA uh, ceremony at, for the Coast Guard um, Museum that they want to build, the National Coast Guard Museum. $150 million dollar project they don't have done in 2024. That's exciting. It'll be another big draw for members in the area. Um, biggest news, of course, is that the Nautilus is back at her, at her pier, uh, her berth at the, the museum. And uh, next Friday night at 1230, there's going to be a big party over there, a big, uh, big event, uh, where we're going to welcome her back officially. The governor's coming and probably some other uh, high ranking um, politicians and whatnot are probably going to come, you know, dignitaries, uh, folks from the town. Um, so it's going to be a, a great event, and everybody's welcome to come to that. Is that an official invitation? Hmm? Is that an official invitation? Yeah, we know. It's open to the public. It's open to the public. Have you seen any of these things? No, I haven't. It's in the mail. Yeah. In the email. So that's good. We, we welcome back the uh, USS Indiana from a uh, six month patrol uh, uh, on August 10th. And those are always large events, very exciting. Days. Um, just another little uh, thing that I just got through on my email today that somebody may have some interest in. It's not in town, but it uh, certainly has a lot to do with uh, Rotten and Women's Heritage. So the United States Coast Guard is going to have an open house uh, at the sector line on Sound Dining and Haven on September 13th. Excuse me, September 17th from 9 to 3. That's down in New Haven. So it's an interesting place to watch the demonstration. I think there's some interest in that. Um, I just found out today as well. On the 16th, uh, sub base is going to have a job fair on base. You have to have access to the base, but uh, I think there's several positions open like everybody else. Uh, the next, so the, the, the Navy Exchange, the Commissary, um, position of security, and some other, other positions if anybody's looking. Um, it was a big military appreciation day in London, which uh, quite a few folks from the, uh, the base attended as well on August 13th. Uh, Captain Curtin actually run with, ran with the, uh, uh, the cadets uh, on a 5K run and then another, another run as well. So it was kind of fun. Um, but there was three uh, active duty service members who were honored during the ceremony, which I just want to briefly mention. Um, Staff Sergeant uh, Evan I don't know how to say last name, NAVA, NAVA, of the Connecticut Army National Guard, Tech Sergeant Nathan Sani of the Connecticut Air National Guard, Fire Patrol Tech, Second Class Boston Earl of Sub School. Uh, NAVA responded to a person in distress on the Pearl Harbor Memorial Bridge in Haven, that was September 21st. Uh, and then those efforts helped keep that individual from jumping and harming himself, so that's good. Um, this is the uh, Fasani ran uh, door to door uh, to alert his neighbors during a fire that destroyed two multi family homes in the Rockville section of Vernon. Uh, his, uh, back in March of 2021, 
and his efforts contributed contribute to saving the lives of uh, more than a dozen people. And uh, both Tom Earl responded in his capacity as a volunteer firefighter with the oldest volunteer fire department with a three alarm structure fire that extensively damaged a double duplex with four units in Broughton uh, in May of 2022. Uh, Earl performed his duties, including fire attack, ventilation, overhaul, and salvage operations. The efforts of Earl and all the others that responded uh, from the fire departments and first responders during three hour fire assured the rescue of three families, six adults, as well as pets. So that was a, a really great event as well. Oh, Thank you very much. Love the pets later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they always go high. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Aaron, very nice to see you. Would you like to comment on your? My apologies for my party. No, no, no. <laughs> well, nice to see you. You're on time. Hello. You used to have a time for you somewhere. <laughs> well, that's really my report. They only plug off quick and many kids for uh, the Broad City Group Run, uh, which is on the 10th. It's a wonderful event. I uh, ran last, well, walk uh, last year, uh, but it, it's a wonderful event. It's great for uh, families. It's great for everyone. So come out and enjoy. So, so Greater Mystic Chamber is doing that, but is that in, in concert with the city on top? I mean, it's a Greater Mystic Chamber event. Okay. Uh, Ground Utilities is the primary sponsor. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we definitely collaborate with them. Oh, great. We were chatting about that earlier. That's mm -hmm. just uh, Thank you very much. Okay. Any other new business? Well, Steve's going to chime in as uh, David. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Do you have a liaison report from the town council? I, I do not. I, I do not. Other than what we discussed earlier regarding the you know the TOPE report, that was about all I wanted to provide. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, as I said, Robert will be there at your meeting. So look excellent. Forward Looking forward to it. Great. Paige, just. We talk about this often. We talked about it at the beginning. Um, we definitely are asking for the EDC to assist us in finding qualified people to serve on the EDC. And what does that mean? People that uh, have a passion for economic development, business growth in town, um, and also who are willing to participate more than just one meeting a month, but engage and, and do certain initiatives. So please, if you have ideas, if you're speaking with people, um, please reach out, or if you want us to reach out, we'll do that. But, um, we need your help. Thank you. Yeah, I'll add on that also, because as, as I've made myself clear, that this is my fifth year doing this, and, and uh, I'll probably be moving on from December. That being said, I've had conversations with people, and a lot of them are just like, oh, they, they, you know, I'm busy, da, da, da. I've, I've taken a different approach because it's a five-year term. I always do everything this way in my life. Give it a year. Give me a year of volunteer. That's really all I ever ask myself to do because then I see how it can end up after that year as a trial. But when someone makes a year commitment, it's a lot less intimidating. It's more of a, yeah, I'm going to try it. And then they can see if they have the passion and, and the desire to contribute to it. So, um, it's just an approach that I take with my own self, um, and I've been here for five years, so. And I'm like, fourteen years. Old. Yeah, I know. So some of us have more passion than others. I, I found out just now how long the first pitch will get. So yeah, well, as I said, if you get little emails from the town manager saying, "Congratulations, you re up," that's what they do. But as an approach, when you're talking to people, I would encourage you to you know, say, "Hey, this is what we're looking to do," because. We literally don't know for month to month if we're having a meeting because of work. Um, and that's not the help. You know, it's fine if people have vacation time and stuff like that. But when you have a commission of nine, it's okay. When you have a commission of six, it gets very difficult um, to on, a, on a month to month basis to do it. And participation wise, um, as you see, I give everything over to my, my right. It's <laughs> nice to be able to give out you know, some more. So you're a great tip. Oops. I I mean, I mean, they're called, that's not what I do this for. I do it just to keep it going. And I do have a passion for economic development okay. wherever I've been. So um, I always keep that in mind, what's best for the town of Rock. So, and I think Leanne got me wrote this five years ago, so I have her to thank for it. <laughs> so, 
Uh, hearing no other old new business, I'll entertain a to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, all.